the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. On that day when evening had come, Jesus said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took with him in the boat just as he was. And other boats were with him, and a great storm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so the boat was already being swamped. But Jesus was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke, and he rebuked the wind, and he said to the sea, Peace be still. Then the wind ceased, there was a dead calm, and he said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? Cousin John Pelovanyan's most striking early memory of his cousin Vosken was seeing him dressed up in his navy uniform and wanting to follow his example. It's indeed impressive that Vasquez Manassan served his country in the United States Navy. But to me, it is equally impressive that he served for so long in the Armenian Navy. And I'm not talking about an Armenian state navy, of course. Most of you know that in its history, Armenia has rarely had a state, and it hasn't had a navy because it's been landlocked. In lieu of a state and a navy, however, the Armenian church has often seen itself as the spiritual army and navy, the defender of its people and their faith, a protector against evil from without and evil from within, a ship navigating safe passage through this beautiful and perilous journey of life. Vaskin Manassian, I would say, served the Armenian church navy all his life, and, by the way, he almost even became one of its ordained officers, which I will get to that story in a minute. But first, let me set the scene of the Armenian Church Navy that Vaskin served. The place you are sitting in right now, in Armenian, is called the Nav, which is the same word for boat, for ship. We're in this boat together, literally, in the Armenian Church. There is an anchor on our baptismal font, grounding us in faith when we come across rough seas. When Lent begins in two days, three days, we'll sing the ancient hymn, Tsov Gensa Ruiz, Sea of My Life. It goes, my, lo my life is afloat on a storm-tossed sea, waves of the enemy upon me heave, good captain, my soul shelter be. And then there's today's gospel reading, which is assigned more times than any gospel reading through the year, where Jesus leads his followers across stormy seas to the other side. The Armenian Church Navy attempts to discipline all of us to have courage and faith to set sail on the amazing and perilous journey of our lives and arrive safely to the other side. Not everyone is up for this adventure. But Vosken, hashtag salty dog, Manasyan, certainly was. His life echoed the saying, a ship is not built to stay in the harbor. Life is made for living. Ships are made for sailing through calm and through storm, but always on to greater places and always following the life-giving commands of our good captain and Lord Jesus Christ. I will leave it to all of you in the fellowship meal following this service to share your stories of this man whose ship did not stay in the harbor, who lived his life fully and faithfully as Jesus bids us. I will keep my comments about Voskin's life to his life of service in the Armenian church. And I'll start with that story of how Voskin almost transitioned straight out of the official service of the U.S. Navy into official service in the Armenian Church Navy. He wrote about this actually 10 years ago in our church newsletter. This is what he wrote. When I was discharged from the U.S. Navy, the VA had an extensive and comprehensive evaluation program for veterans to determine their aptitude and talents as part of the GI Bill. This is after World War II. I was tested and found that my aptitude was religious and socially oriented. And on the top of 
on the list of jobs in that category on top of it was a priest in capital letters with three exclamation points. An Armenian priest? Why not? But then, Voskin writes, I recalled 75 years ago in grammar school during a music class. My teacher stopped the class from singing and turned to me and said, Voskin, you're more of a listener than a singer. <laughs> Voskin writes, Voskin continues, I have not since that day attempted to sing, not Heidmerd, which we'll sing today in Voskin's honor, nor the Star Spangled Banner. I do mumble to myself quite well. He goes on, still my uncle Arshavid wouldn't let it go and he strongly urged me to become a high surp. He would use his political influence to sponsor me to become the first American to become the Catholicos of all Armenians. Ha, the first Catholicos that could not carry a tune. And now you know why I chose to become a professional industrial engineer. So that's Voskin's story of how he didn't become an ordained leader of the Armenian church, told with humor and grace to poke fun at himself. What Voskin didn't say that I will say clearly today is that he actually was an ordained leader of the Armenian church. Ordained at his baptism and charged to go make disciples of all nations, Voskin truly responded to God's call to lead and serve the church in basically every position we have. Uh, parish council, building committee, uh, Bible study host, uh, not the choir, <laughs> but everything else. And together with Karen, who matches Voskin's love and dedication step for step, these two have been a power couple of service and commitment to this church for so many years. Now let's not turn Voskin into a saint. This gets more fun now. He would be the first to resist that. Voskin had his own way of seeing and doing things, and he was relentless and dogged in pursuing them. Uh, this could be tough to manage as part of a leadership team, and I'm honestly glad that I came to the church at the end of Voskin's most active leadership. I have an entire folder of letters and initiatives from Voskin in his 80s, and mostly written in all caps, by the way. <laughs> Would I have even survived Voskin in his 50s? Voskin lived by the official motto of every st strong-willed Armenian layperson that it's better to ask forgiveness uh, than permission. And here's a great example. I only learned about the day before yesterday, actually. I'm still processing. Someone in church noticed that Voskin would fill his pockets with moss, its blessed bread, at the end of service. Wow, what a faithful man Voskin is. Well, it turns out he was giving it as a spiritual treat to his dog Anush every morning <laughs> of the week. And I, of course, can't condone that, and I had no idea of it. <laughs> and I'm preparing myself to learn about other under the table initiatives in today's fellowship and days <laughs> to follow. But whatever Voskin's shortcomings, he did everything out of love for church and in faith. They say that a picture is worth a thousand words, and if you just look through the thousands of pictures that Teresa takes of the life of this church from the past 15 years at least, you will find dozens of Voskin bent over in prayer, eyes closed, hands grasping the forward pew. Voskin didn't take orders from me, he didn't take orders from the bishop, but he did take orders from the true captain of the Armenian Church Navy and the St. Huggle Church ship, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. You might see something else in all those pictures of Voskin, which Karen reminded me of. Voskin did have a twinkle in his eye. It sort of reflected his faithful, brave, and mischievous spirit. That twinkle, of course, faded into his 90s, but it was still there, and it was even there when I visited him in the last days of his life. And like all passengers journeying across the sea of life, uh, the storm of death shakes even the best sailors. 
Yet in his eyes, I still saw glimmers of that faithful spark. It was as if Vosgen had ventured above deck to check on conditions, and he returned to reassure his frightened traveling companions. All is well. I saw the captain, and he smiled. May our good captain, our Lord Jesus Christ, be our guide as he was Vosgen's. For our ships were not built to stay in the harbor, but to sail through life to the fullest and always on to greater places, now and always, and unto the ages of ages. Amen.